everyone. I'm your host, Amir Makelson. You're watching Street Beat. It's great to have you along. It's hard to believe, but summer is just about over, and the school year is very quickly approaching. Getting ready for back to school means a lot more than just new supplies and school clothes. It also means mentally and physically preparing our kids for the routines that coincide with the school year. Now, my first guest this morning is here to talk to us about what we should focus on this fall. I'd like to welcome Justin Tromley, class teacher at Detroit Waldorf School. Justin, how are you? Good to have Good. you here this morning. Thank you for having me. Your, uh, Waldorf School, that is a school downtown that I've passed a thousand times and don't really know too much about. What is Detroit Waldorf? Um, we are an independent school um, that's been around for just over 50 years now. Um, and we uh, have a very, our school strives to have a really strong balance of academics, art, music, physical education to, to create a really well-rounded student. So is it a school for anyone? Oh yeah, yes, and, for and, anyone. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we have kids from Detroit and the surrounding suburbs um, who all come to the school. Okay, now when you say uh, obviously a kid has to be ready physically, mentally for school, what are the things that a parent needs to look for to make sure that their child is ready? Sure, and I have uh, two daughters of my own who are getting ready for school this year too, and the three areas that we should really be looking at to get ready for um, a successful school year are diet, uh, sleep, and uh, routines or rhythms. You know, we I think sometimes we think about diet and sleep too lightly. We talk about it all the time, but it's not really packed with information. Mm -hmm. How important is sleep? How much sleep should a child have? And, and, and how does the diet fit into that? Um, well, as far as sleep goes, there's been a lot of recent studies that link uh, adequate sleep, really, you know, deep sleep, not just tossing and turning, which um, happens a lot to children when they uh, go, to, go to bed overstimulated. But um, adequate sleep really has shown to improve performance in languages and math especially and so it's very important and then personally as a teacher in the classroom if a child comes to school and they're tired in the morning or, or they start to drag as the day goes on of course it's hard for them to learn I mean I have the same experience if I'm feeling tired. So. Everything is, is bigger. I mean, all problems are always bigger when you're tired. Right, you know? yeah. So, well, now, psychologically, how do you, what is the preparation there? For? For school, just to be ready for school. Um, f for myself or for the children? For the kids. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we I mean, assume you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. They, uh, uh, you know, psychologically, they'll be more prepared if they're eating healthy and they're into um, and they're getting good sleep and they're having uh, and and those things are both supported by having consistent rhythms throughout the day at home. Um, we really strive at the school to create a consistent rhythm for the kids as they go through the day so that they know what's coming next and that they can focus on what's happening immediately without having any um, worry or anxiety about what's now, what coming are, what later in the day. What do you mean by that exactly, consistent rhythms? Um, so, uh, for example, you can create a really solid bedtime routine for your kids uh, so that they know exactly what's going to go on. You have dinner and then they know that dinner is followed by maybe a family game for 10 or 15 minutes. That's followed by brushing their teeth a book before bed, whatever really works for the family, but that it's set up in the same way consistently each day so that they can um, flow into the, to the bedtime. Do families take the time to do that? Um, the ones who do, you know, find a lot of uh, benefit from it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You mentioned diet. Um, we all know that kids should eat fruits and vegetables. That's a whole lot easier said than done. Yeah. Any, any tips or suggestions on how that might happen? Yeah. Um, a couple of things that you can do are uh, have your children prepare food with you. Um, healthy food with you. Uh, they get very excited about eating anything that they've um, helped with. Done themselves. And then uh, my girls love to help pack up their lunches in the morning too. So uh -huh. you can kind of guide them to select healthier foods. At the school we also have a program called Wellness at Waldorf where we have uh, after school baking and cooking classes and those are very popular at the school. So, I would imagine. Yeah, getting the kids involved with the food is, is a huge step. And snacks, healthy snacks? Yeah, I mean they can help prepare those as well. Yeah. yeah. Do you what what grades uh, are at Waldorf? We have um, preschool. Actually, this year we're starting a, a nursery program all the way up through eighth grade. And it's been around for a long time. Yeah, just over fifty years. 
Wow, and you were telling me earlier it is a system, the Waldorf system, right? Uh, yeah, the Waldorf is a form of education, a, a, a kind of education, and, and there's schools all over the world. All over the world, I, yeah. and I, I had no idea. I thought it was a school specific to Detroit. Yeah, no. What's, what's the best thing about Waldorf? Oh, uh, well, we have a very strong academic program, but it's, it's v very much um, supported by a strong arts and music program. So, so it's all around. Yeah, we, we infuse everything we do with uh, art and music. Okay, that's very important. Just yeah. as important as other classes. People don't always understand that, but it yeah. certainly is a fact. Yeah. Well, thank you. It sounds really very interesting. If you'd like any more information on Detroit Waldorf School, all you have to do is visit DetroitWaldorf.org.